Welcome to the St. Stephen Power Generating Station and Fish Passage Facility. Constructed and owned by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and operated by the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, St. Stephen is a hydroelectric plant that enables Santee Cooper to provide power to approximately 40,000 homes in South Carolina. It also features a special lock that allows up to 650,000 to 750,000 migrating fish to pass through the St. Stephen Dam on their annual upstream journey to spawn. We will learn about the life cycles, migration, and spawning habits of the fish that pass through St. Stephen. We will see the ways that humans have made these life cycles more difficult in the past. You will see how the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, Santee Cooper, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have worked to restore fish passage and the wonderful diversity of South Carolina's waterways. The story of the St. Stephen fish lift begins with the fish themselves. The diadromous fish of the Santee Cooper River system have evolved to take special advantage of their coastal environment. Diadromous fish encompass two groups of fish, the anadromous fish and the catadromous fish. Anadromous fish are those animals that spend their juvenile life stages in fresh water and in brackish water and then when they're adults move into salt water. But then they travel up into the fresh water through the rivers and streams to spawn. And the catadromous fish are just the opposite. They spend their adult lives in fresh water and migrate into salt water to spawn. There are many types of anadromous fish, such as blueback herring, American shad, striped bass, and Atlantic and short-nosed sturgeon. The blueback herring and American shad have particularly perilous life journeys. The fish have a really difficult time just surviving in a marine or saltwater or freshwater environments because of the amount of predation. They're food for everything. American shad go all the way up to Nova Scotia. They make the journey. They spend four or five years of their adult life in the Atlantic Ocean. And then they'll, they'll migrate back down current and then uh, come back up into the rivers to spawn. One of the dams that made this ancient migration more difficult was the Wilson Dam, built on Lake Marion in the late 1930s. The original Santee Cooper project involved damming the Santee River and the flow was diverted through a diversion canal uh, into Lake Moultrie and the water flowed to Lake Moultrie and then through the Pinopolis Dam, through the hydros and into the Cooper River for hydroelectric generation. We realized that when they made a dam to the Panopolis that we had trapped fish into the lake. Normally striped bass would eat blueback herring and shad. And we had to get the fish in there, otherwise those sports fish would die. But the bass, shad, herring, and other fish managed to survive, thanks in part to the navigational lock in the Panopolis Dam. In 1944, there were huge numbers of them gathering at the Panopolis Dam. What happened is that they started passing the shad and herring and other species at the lock, and it was lucky that they were able to pass millions of them, and that's what kept the population going. The boat lock helped the fish populations to survive, but surviving is not the same as thriving. The lock is a useful tool for helping the migrating fish, but because it was designed for boats, it is not as efficient as it could be. Designed as a vertical fish lock, the St. Stephen fish lift was engineered to pass fish safely and efficiently on their migratory journeys. We have been passing fish since 1985 through the St. Stephen's fish lift. We pass 350,000 shad and up to 400,000 blueback herring. That's a lot of fish to pass in just a few short weeks in the springtime. How does the St. Stephen fish lift do it so efficiently? St. E. Cooper and the Army Corps of Engineers release water through one of the three turbine units that are there to attract fish up from the river. We also supplement an attraction flow coming through the fish lift system itself to entice them out of the main flow of the turbines over into two weir gates. Special gates create and adjust water flows to attract fish into a long entrance channel on the downstream side of the dam. These channels create a simulated riverine environment to entice the fish. The entire lift cycle takes 13 to 15 minutes and is repeated many times during the spring migration. Once past the entry channel, a gate called a crowder 
closes behind the fish and drives them into the lock chamber. The lock chamber floods to lake level, just as a boat lock does. The fish are prompted to swim up the lift chamber as the water level rises slowly and the braille basket is lifted. At the top of the lock chamber, a gate opens and the fish swim into the exit channel. Once they're at that level, the gate opens and allows the fish to pass through viewing windows where they are counted by South Carolina Department of Natural Resources biologists. And we have viewing windows also for the public that they can come and see one of really nature's wonders, these, the fish migrating back to spawn. Uh, and then on into the lake from there. Additionally, they also pass by a sample basket which can be used to collect samples for spawning and to closely observe fish of interest identified in the viewing windows. This information is important to the proper management of the fisheries. Biologists at St. Stephen also collect brood fish for study and use at the on-site Jack D. Bayless Hatchery. They take brood stock fish, i.e. those females and males that have not spawned yet, and move them into the hatchery, spawn them, and then grow them out. And then they stock those fishes in certain areas around the state. It really is an augmentation of the natural uh, populations. These efforts can produce up to 14 million striped bass and up to 3 million American shad each year. The St. Stephen Fish Lift is a success story of cooperation, environmental responsibility, and finding the balance between man and nature. You know, we have the unique opportunity for South Carolina DNR, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, National Marine Fisheries Service, and the Army Corps all working together to restore the populations, but also look at the hydroelectric needs of the people. We do the best that we can in passing fish, but we're also trying to find a balance between the needs of people. The need to produce power for people and to maintain a viable fishery.